First up we have Vincent. This is the cartoony bounce. And right away this looks good. I think it's got um, everything we were looking for. Uh, it's stretching, seems to be holding its uh, volume, swashing, got that sort of recovery frame. Um, you've got the two contact frames, which is good. I would argue that maybe it's getting, it's, if it's going to be this squashed, it should needs to be a little flatter to not look like a larger ball, but that's, you know, it's, it's pretty darn close, so it looks, it looks pretty good. Um, and yeah, and the rest of those look good, so you yeah, really don't have much to say to change this one. Um, it looks very good. This next one is a basketball realistic bounce. I think it looks good. I think um, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. It's got a nice quick feeling to it. Um, there's a problem here, which is that um, it holds here for two frames, and a realistic ball is not going to do that. So it gives us feeling like it, a kind of a, a stuck feeling there. Um, so yeah, you just need to basically remove that keyframe. It can change this to frames, I think. Because it's frame six, it looks like. Um, you know, or the one at seven. Maybe the one at seven instead. And then, uh, yeah, it looks like you've got that here too. So you need to remove those extra frames. That works for a cartoony bounce, but not for a realistic one. Um, yeah, again, here. And it's sort of messing up. And now it's nice that you don't have that here. And those last, those two bounces look really good. Those little bounces. And the roll is looking good, so... The other thing is to take a look at your forward momentum. Um, sometimes, depending on the spin of the ball, um, it can sort of speed up and slow down. But usually what you'll find is a fairly even forward momentum, independent of what's happening up and down. And, you know, it gradually slows in its forward momentum, but it, it usually doesn't speed up and slow down, except for that uh, when spin comes into account. But since we don't see much spins going on, what I'm noticing is it seems to kind of start out a little slower and then speed up for this bounce. Uh, looking at the distance this covers, if we look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and over seven frames, that's maybe like I don't know, a third of the distance it's traveling. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Like about nine or so. Um, that's less distance over more time than the bounce after it. So um, if anything, it should sort of slow down a little bit, but it's going to be fairly even. So remove those additional um, contact frames and then get the forward momentum to be a little bit more even. Um, and uh, this will be better. And then the roll off at the end again looked like it sped up a little bit, maybe. Well, because this 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 was a little slower, and that was a little faster. So, what you can actually do is I, I'm guessing this is X translate, but whatever translate it is, you can just go in the graph editor and just remove all the middle keyframes and just have the start and end frame and just have a linear movement. It'll probably look better, so take a look at doing that. But overall, very good work. Clearly a lot of attention to detail. Next up is Alberta. Um, I'm just going to look at these in Maya because it'll be easier to show how to change things there. Um, and Alberto turned in Maya files, which is a good thing too. Um, so let's take a look at uh, Maya. And this is the cartoony one, I believe. So I think, um, you know, you've got some good things going on. I think you were kind of ambitious, and I probably would have said get the basics right first before you try to do, you know, a whole complex animation like this. I think that, you know, obviously in cartoony, you know, some of the rules are different, um, but it should still sort of feel like it follows more of a logic of physics, and I think it's not... Um, 
So I'm just going to look at the uh, graph editor here. And um, let's take a look at the Y translate curve first of all. So the, the bounce should have this kind of shape where these all have to come to a point down there. So I'll show you the difference. Watch the animation now. And see how it kind of slows down at the bottom? It's like it doesn't look like a pop, like a bounce at the bottom. It's sort of this um, very soft looking bounce in a way. And now let's fix that. So um, I think this, I'm going to delete that and that. Those are unnecessary. Then I'm going to take all of these guys and um, break the tangents, which is here, and um, move the, well, take the, um, I'm just selecting the left tangent of all of these, moving those all up at the same time, and now I'll select the, yeah, you have to select the keyframe and then the tangent. So I'm marquee selecting the keyframe and the marquee selecting the tangent. I'm in move mode. I'm middle mouse dragging. And see how those all come to a point now at the bottom instead of that rounded bottom? And these are um, unnecessary, those. Um, so I'm going to get rid of some of these extra key. Oops. Extra keyframes. And um, just, uh, yeah, those are all flat, but um, this one probably, I'm just going to move this guy back. So it's just a nicer rounded shape, and we'll figure that out in a second. But let's just, just look at this right now and see how, if that looks better to you. Okay, I would argue that already looks bouncier. Um, so that's the first thing. And then the squash and stretch isn't quite right because what should be happening is it's sh it sort of, look first of all, it looks like it's kind of growing rather than um, stretching because uh, it's just, it looks like a larger volume as it goes from here to here. So if it's going to get that long and it needs to get proportionally more narrow. And then it's already squashing before it hits, so should it, it should be at its most stretched right before it touches down. And then uh, right uh, at contact, it should squash. So let's take a look at that real quick. That's going to be our various scales. Um, so you've got this. This is the most... What it looks like to me is, yeah, you've only changed the Y, and, and that's not right. You need to proportionally scale the X and Z, and that's why it's not. So um, let's change that. I have auto keyframe turned on. Um, I'm going to uh, scale it narrower. What? I don't know. We should see those numbers changing here, and I don't know why they didn't. That is strange. Some kind of weird error there. Let's see if that keyframe held. It's, it does seem to be acting a little odd. Um, and then uh, I might look at the right view. That might be a little easier to see what's going on. Yeah, it looks a little disproportionately scaled. Is there a parent to this or something? No, there's not. Hmm. Odd. Yeah, it's still... It looks sort of skewed here. Which is indeed strange. Um, Non-object space at scale baked onto components. Just reset my scale tool and see if that's the problem. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, I just had a weird mode in my... No, it's working normally. That was my fault. I had a, my scale tool in a weird mode. Sorry about that. So now I can see it's 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 squashing, but stretching, but it should be fully stretched right before it touches down. So um, let's look at what the contact frame is. I'm going to hold down K and drag here and it appears to be that one so maybe go to 
this frame 24 and I'll remove um, these keyframes and take those and W shift middle mouse drag to put them there so it's at its most stretched right before it um, touches down and then um, when it touches down it should squash so again I don't know why it looks sort of distorted usually what that would mean was there was some kind of parent unless you use something else and modify the shape I'm not sure it looks like the shape's been modified somehow um, anyway I'll just work with what we've got so um, in normal, I would have put the pivot point at the bottom, which I believe I showed in the uh, module. But, you know, let's make it shorter and flatter. And it's a little bit unclear to me where it actually contacts because it's hitting this sort of a rounded surface here. But um, let's move it down a little bit. Um, and then. So, what I'll, I'll take out this, these couple keyframes, and what I would do is just, I might take this, I'll just copy these scale frames, control C, and then maybe over a couple frames, control B, have them, that didn't work. Okay, maybe I won't do that, I don't know, I, it's like pasting it to the wrong place, so, um, let's just get this back to one first and again it's very confusing because something has skewed this and I feel like it's something that happened before you started animating I'm guessing but anyways it looks sort of stretched now so anyways the point is it fully stretches it squashes you can kind of have it recover and then it stretches and then when it gets to the top of the bounce, um, it should be, you know, at, at uh, you know, proportional again. So it still looks a little weird. Again, it looks weird because um, it, it's skewed to begin with, and I don't know. So it makes a little more sense now, but it's a tough example because it's skewed to begin with. Anyway, so that gives you some idea of how you improve this. I think, yeah, it's a little confusing. You've got a lot of keyframes going on here. What I would say is try to do the really basic one first, which is the one demonstrated in the lesson. Get that just right. Then if you want to do an embellished one like this, try that afterwards. And this is uh, Alberto's realistic one, entitled Stair Plastic Ball. Um, and what I would say is, I would argue that this is not very realistic um, at this point. I think it was an ambitious effort. Um, I think that what you really need to do is study some reference because it's kind of not how a real ball would move. So a, a real ball, so it's got this forward momentum and then suddenly it drops straight down. But a real ball with forward momentum would, would go, you know, would kind of move, continue moving forward at that speed and not just sort of suddenly drop and then this this kind of as soon as, as soon as it gets over that edge it goes straight down and then suddenly gets more forward momentum and I, you know I like the conceptually I like the idea of hitting the corner and then jumping the rest of the steps so that was good I think you can cool and I like that it goes into a roll but I think maybe you want some more little bounces so um, just looking at the um, the forward momentum here, what does that translate? Z, I get, no? Y is up and down. Okay, yeah, the X. So, at least up into, say, when it hits this, I would sort of expect it to be fairly linear here. I would, I'm just gonna add a keyframe there. Um, and let's just delete these out. And this should be 
probably will just do linear. And let's just take a look at what happens now. So yeah, it starts dropping there, which we obviously can't have. So let's um, you know when it gets to I guess here. Um, I'm gonna delete all these out. Take this one, W shift middle mouse drag, and so there it just it stays level until and let's just I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the um, scale keyframes altogether because I feel I feel like there's too much squash and stretch there anyways. So now it's rolling off and obviously it drops too quickly there. Whoops, undo. I'll just take all these out. Ah, we're kind of missing it now. I'll take these out too. I got a more natural feeling sort of drop. Turn the wrong button. Okay, getting there. And so it drops. Let's take a look at this again. Drops. And let's say, let's have it hit this corner. I'm going to take out these two also. And then let's say it hits this corner. Maybe I'll just move this a touch forward and a touch down. OK. Um, then you can do something interesting with it kind of bouncing off that again you know getting more so we could go kind of back up at this point if you wanted um, I'm using K and middle mouse K and left drop mouse drag so I would kind of have it hit this corner go up maybe to here at, up until there um, and then it shouldn't drop quite so fast let's look at that white translate let's maybe um, let's just take all these out. Oh, wow. Oh, that's, we'll have to fix the X curve there. It's got this flat part. Um, so. Yeah, basically, <laughs> most of what I'm doing is just deleting keyframes. Um, so it hits the corner. And we might want it to kind of speed up here a, a little bit. So I might um, just take all these and W shift middle mouse drag and move it forward so it kind of accelerates here. I might even break this tangent and take this and middle mouse drag that so it kind of gets a, it feels like it speeds up when it bounces off that step. Okay, it, it feels like it's floating down a little bit, but I kind of like that idea of that popping off that step. I might have overdone it. Yeah, I think it's sort of feeling like it's floating down now. So let's go back to our Y translate. Let's not make this so gradual. Let's, I guess what I might do is just delete that out and then W shift middle mouse try and pull these guys back and break this tangent and move that up some and then maybe put another little bounce in here and then um, get that back where is this y translate of this I'm just going to copy that and paste that wait wait a minute well, i don't know just move it down manually Is it just zero or is it? Yeah, oh, I see. It's like 0.5. It's the actual. No, not even. Oh, because it's some weird scale. So I'll just do this <laughs> the right way. Okay. So put an extra little bounce in there. Let's see where we're at. Alt Shift V, Alt V. What's the hotkey for that? All right. I'm not in love with it, but I think you're getting hopefully an idea of how maybe you can improve this a little bit, uh, make it more realistic. Yeah, I think it needs kind of this um, 
more gradual uh, roll to a stop at the end um, with the X here. So yeah, we probably just stretch that out a bunch. And let's watch that again. Oh, okay, we kind of slow down and speed up here. So let's just take those two out. Yeah, I could go even further at the end there. The other thing is that Y little hop here could be um, a little smaller. Yeah, better. Okay. Yeah, so now we, whoops, backwards. Yeah, so that's better. So anyways, I do, again, the one thing I didn't do is look at reference. So the real thing to do is roll the ball downstairs, videotape rolling the ball downstairs, and, you know, study it, and then use that as your reference rather than trying to do it out of your head. Next up is Brittany. This one is the cartoony bounce. Good. Um, so let's see. So it's stretching. It's sort of like an abrupt change between these two. Um, this is one where you see the difference of where that extra contact frame can really help because it seems like a kind of jarring thing for the distance it travels. I guess it somehow seems to be traveling more dis Well, I guess it should if it's accelerating, but that change is so extreme, um, it's tough. But, um, so you the, the improvement you can make is to do the, the second contact frame on the bounces. But overall, I think, you know, you, apart from that extra thing, you, you know, you've basically done everything right. Okay, this is a realistic soccer ball. Looking really good. Um, I would say um, put in a ground plane, it just helps, you know, so it's not bouncing on air. Generally, I would say this feels a little slow motion to me. Um, I think there's a way. Can we speed it up in here? Oh, I guess not. I thought you could speed it up. Maybe that's in the advanced, the pro version or something. Um, doesn't matter. Anyway, see, so yeah, let me just drag it a little faster. So, just you know, watching me drag it faster. That's maybe a little too fast, but it feels more like a real soccer ball when it goes faster. This feels very floaty, like a sort of a soccer ball on the moon. Um, I think the rotation stuff you've done is really good. I think that the way it kind of ha almost hangs in the air, you might want to look at that curve because it's, uh, yeah. And you've got some very subtle squash and stretch in there, which is really nice actually, because I actually didn't even notice it until I um, kind of went frame by frame. Uh, but it, it's it's subtle, but it helps bring it to life. So that's a nice touch. And I think that at the end there, watch out for that slide. So you'll need to increase the amount it's rotating. See how it's it's not rotating enough for the distance it's traveling. So it looks like it's sliding along the ground rather than rolling there. So you'll want to increase the rotation at the end there. So overall, this is good. There's a lot of attention to detail. But what I would say is um, just um, look at the timing. You know, uh, maybe you look at some more reference, and uh, really that looks slow. If I were to drop, you know, if I were to drop a ball from this, high, you know, from let's let's say this is, you know, I don't know, shoulder height or something. It's like, um, you know, it's it's not going to take. What do we have here? Um, Okay, it's less than one second, which is good, but it's nearly a second to drop. And, you know, if, if that ball, you know, with that size and this distance, that's that's not even shoulder height. That's maybe hip height. Um, and if it's going to drop, you know, 9.8 meters per second, it's, anyways, it should take a fraction of a second to fall that distance. And it's taking about a second. So really this thing, I would say, you might want to just try doubling the speed of it. And what you can do, I, I don't, I know I don't have your file. 
but uh, just to look at the previous example, if you wanted to, you know, an easy way to speed something up, let's say we wanted this one to be way faster, I can select this, um, hold down shift, click and drag on the timeline, and then grab these little yellow arrows here, and then now it's, you know, that looks too fast for this one, but I was just demonstrating how to do that. And then once you've done that, you can do right mouse click, snap, and it'll put all those to whole number keyframes. Um, but I'll undo that for this, because I don't think it needs it. Next up is Cindy, and uh, let's go straight into Maya to take a look at this. Um, so we have some issues here. Let's select the ball and look in the graph editor. Whoops, actually. Okay, that's fine. Um, so let's look at the Y translate curve, and it looks okay. Not sure why it's looking so not bouncy to me. I think there's some issues with the squash and stretch going on. Is the main thing. So it's um I think we're not really maintaining volume. So if you look at this um, it's about proportional, and then we get here, and the, uh, yeah, I can see here that has gotten um, larger in the y direction, but as a, for the most part, it's staying the same in x and z. So what you need to do here is, just look at perspective, um, I've got my auto keyframe on. Let's first of all, let's get these proportionally the same, and then let's scale these in and make them more narrow. So let's look at that. Whoops, sorry, that would be the front view. Look at that now. So it should look like it's maintaining the same volume. So if it gets longer, it needs to get um, thinner. And then the same on the squash. So um, it's gotten flatter. Uh, but it hasn't gotten any shorter. So again, let's make these two the same. I'll just make do 1.5 for those, and then we need to make it flatter. And then also in response, I'll need to turn it down. There was the whole thing about putting the pivot point at the bottom to make this uh, easier. Okay. And then by the time it gets to the top um, of this, it should be proportional again, which it is. Um, but this is, you know, sort of messed up here. So let's um, copy this keyframe and paste it here just to, I don't know, it's probably too much stretch though, really. And then let's fix the rotation. Okay, getting better. And you could, you know, you could decrease this a little bit, so I can make it a little shorter. But then, in response, I should also make it a little thicker because it's not as shouldn't stretch as much there. Okay, and doesn't that look a little better now? Hopefully, I think I overdid the the squash is a bit big there but compare that first one to the subsequent ones and it's looking a little more right so a few issues to fix in there just want to check that uh, for you got a pretty linear forward translation so that's fine um yeah and i think you need to fix the rotations and the squash and stretch in there and here's the realistic bounce let's take a look so there's some good thought in the up and down timing. Um, there's a few issues here, which is one, again, we can see this in the graph editor pretty well. Um, let's take a look at the Y translate, and it doesn't seem to, I guess it is touching on those frames. For some reason, it doesn't seem to be, I guess you'd want it to, you know, hit the grid line and it's not there. So let me just take all of these and including those W shift middle mouse drag and just drag those down so it's touching because it's 
you know, it's bothering me that it's bouncing above that. Okay, so that helps with that a little bit. I think what's happening there? Oh, see, that is not on. What's it? what we're getting here is um, see how this is at forty-four point five this keyframe, so it's not landing on a whole number keyframe, and that's why it looks like it doesn't contact there, because it doesn't contact, in fact, on either frame 44 or 45, it contacts on 44 and a half, which of course we don't see. So I can just select that one and change that to let's say 44. And then now we actually see that. So, um, okay, better. Now, um, the forward momentum, and I, I talked about this in a previous one, forward momentum for most balls tends to be pretty even, sort of gradually slowing down, um, except for when spin comes into account, or, or a ball with uneven weight and those kinds of things. Um, but the typical ball will have pretty even forward momentum. So what I tend to like to do is, is it the X or is it the Z? It's the Z. And see how it's like, in your case, it starts out quite slow, and then it actually gets pretty consistent after that. But there's no reason for it to be so slow at the start and then uh, sort of speed up. So what I would do is just, just take all these guys out, delete, and you kind of want this to um, maybe start out a little bit faster and then sort of gradually slow down, but maybe not, you know, maybe not that severely. Maybe it's like mostly linear, but just a little faster at the beginning, a little slower at the end. Let's see how we like that. So that looks a little better. And I think the other thing you might want to do is, I like that the, the last couple bounces timing-wise are faster, but I think they could get a little smaller because you know, here we're up here, and then we're only a little bit lower there, and only a little bit lower there. So I would go make that more extreme. So let's just look at the Y translate curve. Kind of get, get rid of that guy. And in fact, you might even just want to clean this up, like take out anything we don't need here. Um, and if you want the, and actually that might make it look more realistic. I'm just going to move this to the middle. Um, let's just make sure those are all they're all flat. That looks it looks like you've done some weighted tangents. Oops, maybe already. So let's see if that looks any cleaner. Not much different. So I would go see how these. I mean, yes, it's good they're decreasing in size, but I would go further with all of them. I would go you know, lower, actually, can't go too low with that last one, but a little lower. And then because they're, they're lower now, they have to be even shorter, so the length of time should decrease with each of these. And it looks like you did that some, but I might go a little further with it. Um, just control selecting that. To... Oops. Undo that. Just move that to the middle. Something like that. Okay, a little bit better. still feels, and the whole thing feels a little slow to me, so I might just take this whole, I'll hold down shift, grab that whole thing, speed the whole thing up, and then snap those so they're on whole number of keyframes. Yeah, that's looking a little more realistic to me. Still something slow about maybe that second bounce. Probably taking too long. Uh, maybe this can shorten one. Whoops, what happened there? That looks... No, 
know, something like that. And maybe that second bounce could go. Anyways, I'm just playing. I mean, the real answer to this is obviously, as always, to look at reference. Um, I'm just going by kind of gut here. But that looks a little bit more realistic to me. Okay. Okay, next we have Sung Jung. So something's acting kind of weird. I don't know if it's my playback or... I feel like it looks sort of choppy. Let me try this in VLC and see if it looks any different. Yeah, there's something... I don't know, QuickTime was acting weird there, so... Um, yeah, this looks good. Definitely got everything going on. Um, you didn't do the extra contact frames, so that would be an area for improvement. But other than that, it looks like you got everything right. Um, stayed uh, relatively subtle with the squash and stretch, but I think it works for you know the scale of your bounce and what's going on, so it works well. So I think, yeah, the one improvement would be to do the additional contact frame. And here's the realistic bounce. Um, kind of just looks a lot like the other one with... Um, uh, no squash and stretch, but uh, I would say that to improve it, what you might do is those first couple are looking pretty good. I think that um, maybe go, you know, have these last couple bounces even smaller, or maybe add a couple little do do do, like kind of almost like tiny little bounces at the end, um, depending on what kind of ball it's supposed to be. But overall, yeah, the timing looks pretty believable, depending on what sort of ball and what size it is it's supposed to be, but yeah, it looks pretty good. So next up is Tommy. So it looks like this is the cartoony and this is the realistic. Um, so let's just focus on one of them at a time. I'll just hide this one and we'll take a look at this one. So yeah, you definitely got some squash and stretch, was go which is good. Um, in the module, I demonstrated having it move uh, forward in space and not just up and down, so it would have been better to do that. Um, I think the squash is probably too extreme, and if you are going to squash it that much, it needs to then also be proportionally you know, stretched out that way. Um, Oh, I can see. All right, no big deal. And I would say that, yeah, those last few bounces, I think, you know, it's kind of got a fairly. Let's take a look at the graph editor. So you'll notice it actually bounces higher on this one than that one. So I think you'd want, I mean, you can see that they're decreasing in height with each bounce, which is good, but I think that you wouldn't generally go higher and you'd probably go smaller and then smaller still so we actually we can take a look at that if we want um see if we can see the difference there that's a little better um also i would say probably uh you know either put a ground plane in or have it bounce on the line i guess you pretty much did okay good So yeah, the timing of the squash and stretch is good. I would just have liked to see it um, move uh, forward in space. Um, so let's see, I'll delete the keyframes on the visibility. Just, whoops, that didn't work. There we go, and just turn that off. So we can just focus on the realistic one now. Um, I think that the it's a good idea that it has those quick bounces at the end, but I think that maybe a bit too extreme um, at the end there. They seem very, very fast. 
Um, and I think if they're going to be that fast, the thing to do is then make them really small, you know? Oops. So I would go, you know, even a little smaller than they are if they're going to be so fast. Ah, uh, yeah, that looks a little better to me with being... Um, yeah, so I think it's kind of believable. I guess I'd, you know, again, like to see it bouncing forward in space or maybe have some roll to it or spin. Um, but, uh, yeah, it looks pretty realistic. If, if it's just, per, you know, just the up and down motion looks realistic, but it'd be good to have some forward momentum. Next up is Huao, and uh, let's just take a look at the Maya file. Um, this is the cartoony ball, I believe, and I think, yeah, I believe that's the only one we have, so... Um, Let's take a look at that. As far as in Maya, we have the other one as a movie. So it's got some of the basic moves and the timing right. I think there's a few details to clean up here. Um, let's uh, get the graph that showing down here. And um, first of all, I think on the translate Y, um, it would be good if that maybe can move into the middle here. Um, it seems to be sort of going through the ground plane there, and I think it would look better if it was just shift middle mouse drag, just touching the ground like so. That's Alt B, by the way. I didn't mean to hit that. Um, so, and I think with the amount of squash and stretch you have, I would imagine a little bit of a higher bounce. So it might be interesting to see what this looks like, pulling all of these up a little bit. Um, because otherwise, if it doesn't, if it's not dropping as far, you might want, you know, less squash and stretch. And then there's a couple little kind of errors on the squash and stretch. Um, you don't have that extra contact frame, which always helps. Um, so this one's looking okay, and I think it was, yeah, suddenly, let's see how this rotates here suddenly, and then rotates there. So it's, it's almost just like your um, rotation is, a, it's like a frame early or something. I'm just gonna try moving that back one. I just selected those things, hold down shift and middle mouse drag to move those back one. Oh no, that's a little crazy. Oh, maybe it was the other way around. Oh, that was it. Yeah, it should have just been forward one. And I think, yeah, and then this is kind of... So I think this one shouldn't be in here at all. Right? We didn't really get any squash on this last one either. It doesn't have to be big. I guess there's a... yeah. Maybe a little bit more squash. I mean, if you're going to squash this much here, and you're you're going to go from really a very similar height, you know, there should be as much squash and stretch. So actually what I might do, though, is lower these so that it's not bouncing quite as high. Um, all right, looking a little better. So yeah, you got some of the basics there. We don't have a Maya file for the... Um, realistic one, so we'll just look at the um, movie. So I'm not really sure um, what we're looking at, unless that's a ball supposed to be landing in water. It might be good to kind of label it just so we know um, yeah, what's happening. And I think without the water, so I suppose I would have rather seen a ball, you know, bouncing on the on a hard surface. So it was something that, you know, easier to kind of look at and relate to. So it might be good if you want to let us know and you, know, you can respond in the comments there what, you know, what this was intended to be. And if it was landing in the water, that's actually interesting. I think um, you've got something going there. If it's not landing in the water, then obviously it isn't working. But uh, it'd probably be helpful to label it and talk about your reference and stuff so we know what we're looking at.